how would uh, if somebody's never owned a home standby generator how does it connect to their house and what goes on in the system to make them familiar with that okay no problem so the first things first we want to talk about is that we're going to talk about both electricity and we're going to have to have fuel so whether it's natural gas or propane the generator is going to be pre-connected to the existing portion of the home so if you have propane it would be i'm apologize this is crude but this is going to be what you would do is tie into your home system okay now then the generator is going to provide the electricity so now we need to feed it into the home without making it dangerous so this would be a, a typical utility service coming in from the meter itself okay so coming in from your street you would normally have your utility meter right here feeding directly into your circuit breaker box what we have to do is to make sure that we're isolating one from the other so that you don't have any kind of difficulties you don't have any kind of dangerous situations is we put in what we call a transfer switch now this is going to be completely closed up to the customer so this is again just showing you inner workings but this is going to separate us from the utility grid when we have the generator feed coming in in either case one's going to feed this panel or the other just not both at the same time that's the big thing that we're going to deal with now the thing that we have shown here is just going to be if we're on the generator power and we don't want to make sure that generator is at least as big as the utility service coming in so to save a lot of money we have the ability of controlling one at a time some of the large draw loads in the house so non-essentials so things like air conditioning hot water heaters dryers stoves air compressors etc when the power goes out so let's just say this guy is cut off so from whatever storm happens whatever reason this is no longer provided what's going to happen is inside the transfer switch it's recognizing no power this generator system here is also going to recognize no power when it sees no utility voltage or a significant loss of utility voltage when we have that happen for 10 consecutive seconds the generator starts after this is up and running now this guy is sensing power but it's sensing that it's the generator power not the street power anymore what it's going to do is it has the ability of being either 20 seconds as a delay or 50 seconds as a delay it's field selectable but everybody normally leaves that 20 which means 20 seconds after the generator's running approximately 30 seconds after your power cut you have this switch mechanism changes over to the generator position now you've safely isolated yourself from the utility grid and you're feeding your home with the generator power. And that happens automatically. The customer or the homeowner doesn't even know really that the generator, they don't have to do anything, right? The generator comes on automatically. The switch turns from line power to generator power and then their house is back up and running as if the power never went out at all, right? Correct. The only thing the customer is going to know as far as the fact that the generator is running is if it's close enough to the home to hear it or beyond that point that the power was off or the lights were off for approximately 30 seconds. That's it. And when utilities restored, the system doesn't have that long delay. It's just going to monitor that we're consistently back on the utility service again. And it'll switch seamlessly back up. Shouldn't have to reset clocks or anything at that point. Another question we get is, what about my computer, my tele, my HDTV, uh, all the sensitive electronics? I work from home. How do I know the generator isn't going to fry my sensitive electronics? Sure. All systems that we create are going to have a true sine wave, so it's going to be something that's clean. The, beyond that, we're going to always recommend if anyone's uncomfortable or sensitive electronics, things like that, that they have what we refer to as an electronic governing system inside the generator, which is going to keep your frequency a whole lot more stable than, say, a small portable generator will where it has a mechanical governor. What that means, in layman's terms, really clean sine wave is what it ends up being. It's something that's definitely clean, it's definitely comfortable, it's definitely compatible. These systems are going to be something that's going to not switch unless everything's in good standing. So it should protect you in that case. Beyond that, if you're overly cautious and you want, there is the ability to add surge suppression. 99% of the time, I would say you're gonna have a better chance of a surge coming in from your utility service than the generator. If they ever have faults inside the generator, it typically will lose power, not gain power. I have a central air conditioner, and I run that with a large portable generator, or do I need to get a standby? It's a hard question to answer because there is some calculation and things like that that need to be done depending upon what the unit is. 
Um, if I'm making an honest assumption of a, a typical consumer that's not fully understanding electricity, I wouldn't recommend a portable. Just because of the fact that you don't know if you sized everything appropriately. If you've worked with someone, they've helped you size it, it's possible, but these kind of systems are gonna do all of the thinking for you. That's the point of them. I think a lot of people don't understand that a standby generator works with the transfer switch Correct. and it's able to power the hardwired things in the house. Correct. And if they're looking for emergency portable, they think that they can plug in right. their hardwired equipment. Correct, and the problem you're gonna have with a portable system, it's not that a portable generator has a real problem. It's gonna be the, the lack of awareness and the lack of pre-preparation that you're gonna have. If you have a transfer type system, which they have manual versions and they're available all over that you can get a manual transfer switch and in that case you can power back into your house safely the biggest thing that you need to make sure you're doing is when you're doing these connections is you're not back feeding through a dryer outlet or something like that that's going to give you a problem especially the fact that you don't have a neutral wire so you'd have imbalanced voltage you're going to damage everything 120 volts that you have in the house so fire hazards definitely major concerns yeah, yes shock. beyond the fact that you can become liable to for the fact that you can injure or kill someone that's working on the utility lines without a transfer switch you're back feeding out onto the utility source itself so the guy who's there to try to help you and get your power back up yeah. is now got to be protected from you because you're sending current back out onto a line that he believes is dead i want to get a large portable because then i don't have to pay for installation Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people don't understand that you still need to get a manual switch in order to power your AC. Correct. And I think people are looking for the most inexpensive way to put, get their air conditioning back. Correct. So how would, how would you, uh, what solution would you give to the people that are looking for the most inexpensive option? Correct. When we're getting into the most inexpensive option, let's be honest, price is always, always going to be the, the thing we're looking at. That's why we actually developed our Symphony 2 systems, where these small little modules can control things, monitor things, and smartly monitor how much power we're actually using, how much power we can use, and how much power each individual appliance needs. And in many cases, we can downsize you from maybe a, even this big 20 kilowatt generator into say a 10 or a 12. That might be more than enough for your house and your AC, just not every single thing in your house if they were all turned on at the same time. Vanguard engines are used in all of the Briggs and Stratton standbys except for the, the smallest version, is that yep. right? Our, our entry level system that we have is our eight kilowatt generator. That's still one of our Briggs and Stratton engines, still a very good engine. It's just a single cylinder option and it's, it's a price competitive product, let's be honest. Um, when we get into 10 kilowatt and larger, they're all V-twin Vanguard engines, which is our commercial engine. Our commercial engines are used in much worse environments than a standby generator. Standbys uh, end up in a position that I jokingly refer to as it's a retirement job for an engine. It lives in a very clean environment, and to be honest with you, it's only called on a few times a year to really do work. Other than that, 20 minutes once a week it runs with no load.